Welcome to my tutorial where I'm going to show you how to create a fully AI automated print on demand shop. Copy paste the workflow, fill in the information that applies to your product and your designs, and boom, you're ready to go. Who is this presentation for? This presentation is for people who want to run their own online shop and have it be as hands free as possible, like this guy. It's also great for web designers and store builders who build web stores as a service who want to speed up their turnaround times. It's also great for affiliate marketers that are looking for unique and powerful useful offers that can radically transform their own business and the businesses of their customers and clients. Anyone just interested in learning how AI plus APIs can be used to pretty much automate anything. Print on demand is only one thing you can automate with these tools. If you learn this software, it can be applied to almost anything creatively. I am an affiliate of some of the products that I'm about to share with you, so if you use my links down below, thank you very much. That will help me keep making videos like this. And don't forget to smash that subscribe button and hit that like button if you like this video. Let's get started with setting up and connecting the accounts you're going to need to make this work. Wonder has partnered with Make and they're offering a white labeled version of Make inside their website. So if you sign up for Wonder AI, you actually get Wonder AI and Make for the price of one subscription. Let's take a look. Start by logging into Wonder AI. If you don't already have an account, I've got a link down in the description for you. All right, now I'm in Wonder. Looks basically the same as it has before. We've got this new link to the Wonder engine, but you can also get to the Wonder engine if you're in your workflows, you have a new button. On top of being able to copy and paste these workflows into an existing Make account, if you already have one, you can launch product or click Wonder engine and look where it takes us. Voila, it's Make, only under the Wonder website. I've already imported one of my workflows, and as you can see, this is basically just a working version of Make, but now within Wonder AI. Pretty cool, huh? Next, you'll need to head over to openai.com, and if you haven't already created an account there, you'll need to do so. When you click Login, it'll take you to a login screen, and you'll just click underneath the Continue button. Don't have an account? Sign up. And this is where you're going to be prompted to create your new OpenAI account. If you've already got an account like I do, then you're going to click Login. Let me go back to my other browser. And it's just going to automatically log me in since I have it saved. You're presented with two options, Chat GPT or API. And for what we're going to be setting up, you're going to be clicking on API. And under your main menu over here you have the API keys and this is where you'll go to generate your keys if you weren't prompted to do so during sign up you're going to want to set up your billing your billing must be set up before any of these workflows are going to work it has to have something to charge or the workflow is just going to fail and next you're going to need to create an account on printify.com if you don't already have one and this is the print on demand service provider what you will want to do as soon as you create an account you'll have the option to set up a store and if I remember correctly when I first created my account it kinda walks you through the the first creation of a store but you can hold multiple stores in Printify and connect to them independently. So I have, when we go to my stores right here, I've got an eBay store, an Etsy store, another eBay store, one that I just created for Shopify called Motherfunker. <laughs> so you are actually going to, in this video series, watch me as I build out this new store because it's kind of a new project of mine. Let's go to add a new store. This right here shows you how many places you can publish to. So the end result of all of this, whatever platform you want to connect to that is compatible with Printify, you have it right here. TikTok, Shopify, Etsy, Walmart, eBay, Squarespace, Wix, WooCommerce, BigCommerce. And I'm sure they probably connect with others if you just uh, reach out to them. But whatever you can connect to here, you can ultimately publish to because this is where the result of all the automated processes puts those items in your Printify account. 
And with Printify, you can access their service for free, but they also have a paid service. And when you do the paid service, the big difference, one, there's a monthly cost associated with it, but two, there's a pretty deep discount on all the items. So when you're actually doing this, if you want to lower your overall cost, especially when you're operating at higher volumes, I would opt for the Printify subscription as well. Just like other things, you want to make sure that you have your payments set up right here. And you can function in a top-up kind of way with Printify, but I don't do that. I just connect my card. Make sure you've done this, because if you haven't, you won't be able to start selling. The last thing we need to do is set up a good image scaler. The one I prefer is DeepAI, but if you're a member with Wonder, they have different uh, image scaler workflows that you can choose if you want to. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up DeepAI, so go to deepai.org and set up an account. Once you are signed in to DeepAI, you'll go up to the top right hand corner, click on the little user symbol, and you'll want to view your profile. And this is where you either select a plan. I don't do the monthly plan, I just do top ups. So I'll stick like a hundred bucks in every now and then, and that generally covers me for, you know, hundreds if not a thousand products or so. And what you do is you add credits and you just top up right here. That gives you a balance in your account, and once you've got a balance in your account and you've topped it up, go back to Make and Sign In. When you're signed in to Make, it usually logs you into your uh, organization page, which this is pretty cool. I'm just going to go ahead and go over this. You can have teams and users. So if you have other people that you want to collaborate with, you can invite them and they can work on the project with you. And the invite is just via email. So now let's go to scenarios. And that is what the term is in make for a workflow or something that will connect multiple systems together. I'm going to go to create a new scenario and we get a blank scenario. And we are going to go over to Wonder. I want to do an all over print hoodie and I want to use the new Dolly 3. So I'm going to scroll under their premium workflow. So once you sign in, go under workflows. And I believe it's a premium workflow. Let's see. So there's the, the hoodie that, nope, that's the mid journey hoodie. I want the one that is Dolly. There we go. And see the copy button? This is how this works. Click copy, go back over to make, paste, there's the workflow right into your make account. Sign up for a Google account if you don't already have it, then you're going to want to, well it's a Google business account, and then you're going to want to Google, Google Sheets. Once you are in Google Sheets, you'll click create a blank sheet, title it whatever you wish, I titled mine AI Automated Print Shop you're going to enter in your AI prompts into your different cells. In this case, we're using the sheets for our image prompts. First things first, we'll want to connect Google. Google is really friendly. You'll notice I didn't open up a Google tab a minute ago and try to connect an API. Just like everything else with Google, all you do to make a connection is you sign in with Google. And now say, select from the list, my drive, and then my spreadsheet is AI print on demand store, but you can see I've got other AI sheets I could use. I've got backpack, training blog, art blog prompts, but for actually generating products, I did AI print on demand store. Then where it says sheet name, I believe it'll say prompts, but you need to select what is in your account. Mine happens to be sheet one, and I'm gonna draw from cell A1. And I'll show you what that means. You go to your Google Sheets, if you've created spreadsheets here, you'll see them in a list. If you don't have one, go ahead and create one and title it whatever you want. You'll be selecting it inside of that make module. Here you can see I've got all these different prompts saved. Feel free to steal them, don't care. <laughs> this is my kind of brainstorming list that I have right here. I'm gonna back out of there and you can see cell A1 is brightly colored urban cyber psychedelic pattern high detail. That'll become more apparent how that's going to look when we generate a product here in a few minutes. So I've got my Google Sheets there, and I've connected to Google Sheets here. I've told it cell A1. It then passes that information into our OpenAI module. 
if you haven't connected it here, you'll want to go to add, and this is where you're going to need the information from OpenAI. So you'll go over to your OpenAI website, and you're going to go to organization, and that's where you're going to find your organization ID, which is under settings. So copy your organization ID, paste that right there, and then where it says API key, you'll want to go over to API keys and generate a new key. And then once you've got that key, paste it into that field, save, and you'll have a connection to OpenAI saved, and you can choose, this is the uh, generate an image module, the first one we're calling up, and you can choose Dolly 2 or 3. Uh, while you're first kind of developing through this, you might want to choose 2. It's got more simple options and it's less expensive to use. But I'm now using Dolly 3. I'm not sure what the exact cost is. I'd have to look on their website. I just notice it's a little bit more expensive for me to generate each image. And then you can also set your quality to HD, which I, I find very nice. And it comes pre-set up. All you have to do is choose the model that you want to use. Hit OK. Then it passes the image to the next field, which is going to be for text creation. This one is create a completion module. And it comes pretty much pre-selected, but you will have to change one thing. If, Especially like me, if you are already using the wrong module, this model will not be selected. You will need to select the new 3.5 DaVinci model so that that's what it says right there. This right here is coming up with a name for the file. A name for the product and for the file, really, if you want to do it that way. So one idea that you might do, and I'm going to erase this, and let's say I'm, I'm creating an all-over print hoodie that is bold and colorful, so I'm going to say name for an artist that is non-English and world-renowned. Let's say surname to make that more specific. I don't want the full name. Come up with a surname for an artist that is not English speaking and world renowned. And maximum tokens, that's how many characters in the generation. I don't really want a bunch of names, <laughs> a bunch of really long names, so I set that max tokens at 30. And then let's go to the next which is the text completion that will give us our description for our product. So this is the product title, this is the product description, and we are going to choose the model again. And the reason I'm doing this, I don't know if this is gonna come up for you, I was using this months ago for something different, and so every time I set up a brand new workflow, I have to go in and choose the newer model. Otherwise it'll error out on a deprecated model that's no longer in use. And then the, the description prompt that I'm using here is create a product description for an all-over print hoodie with and see how it's got one value when I hover over that it's pointing here and it takes the value from the cell right there so the value that it ultimately passes it's saying create a product description for an all-over print hoodie with and then it picks up the description, which is the psychedelic cyber blah, 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 designs in 400 characters or less. Use the word and instead of ampersand signs. Add 10 relevant hashtags. Now this came on the advice of the people that taught me the workflow. These are the kind of things that when you're creating your prompts, you kind of figure out over time because when it adds those things, Sometimes in a system that's trying to pass information, like with APIs, that ampersand can be a big no-no, and it can prevent your process. So they've saved a lot of headache right there by doing that. And then we also add 10 relevant hashtags, which will be very useful later. And it looks like max tokens is only set to 150. And see, you can do that. You can have the description be however many characters you want. I'm going to say 400, and I'm going to say max tokens 500. So I always give my tokens a little bit more than I want the actual description to be. Giving it a little bit of a buffer like that is healthy. And so that is now set up. Now we're going to go to Printify and set up our Printify connection. So if you haven't done that, you'll click Add. And this is where you go over to your Printify account. And under your Printify account, I believe it is under Account and Connections. 
And here you go. Just like in OpenAI, you're going to need to generate an API key. And you'll generate the API key. I think we can view them here. Uh, I won't do that because I don't want to reveal any of my keys and have to regenerate them. But I think in Printify we can always view them again. If not, it's not a biggie. Just remember to copy it for the purposes of doing this workflow and then you'll be all happy later. Generate your key, paste it over here, and then you're going to be connected. I'll go ahead and choose my Printify connection since I have a connection. And voila, boom, it comes pre-configured so I don't need to set anything up. And the only thing I need to change here on our second Printify module, so the first one is upload an image, which takes the image created from this module right here. And if you can see, map three, it gives the file name that was generated as the surname for the artist. That's what it applies to the file name. And then it takes the UR, URL uploaded by the second module, which is this one, and if you see right here, the format response is URL. It goes to that URL, seeks the image, uploads the image. Then we've got our product image. Now we go to create our product. And in the create product module, you're going to want to choose your shop ID. It comes pre-configured for wonder since we copy pasted their workflow. I'm going to choose my new shop, Motherfunker. And it's pretty much ready to go. Uh, this was the most tedious part of the workflows when I had my videos released a couple months ago was going through here and setting up, especially for like an all over print or something like that. It was just a nightmare. Now all of that is pre-configured and you really don't have to bother with it. All you really need to do is decide if this is the title that you want because it's going to take your basically your artist name that was just generated dash AOP hoodie. So it can be, let's call it color splash hoodie, you know, just for splash, splash. Okay. And lastly, this is a personal preference of mine. I remove this module. We'll go ahead and connect it so you can see what it looks like. But this is a publish a product module. If you, if you have your prompts perfect and you think that they can just rip and you're not having issues, great. I don't like to use this. I like them to publish in a draft state to my Printify account, which is what Create a Product does, and then later I'll go and publish them. I like to curate my products, and I probably only publish about 80% of them. There will be about 20% that I'm just picky and I don't want that in my store. And if you use the publish a product, this one pushes it straight to your store. So only use this module if you're totally satisfied with the output that you're getting and you just, you know, I guess don't have a problem with it. <laughs> I'm going to remove that. And as you are saving, you might want to go up here and give your scenario a title. So let's call this colorful all over print hoodie. Now when we go to save it'll have a title that's easy to look up later. If, like me, you end up with loads of different scenarios and you need to look for it, I'm going to search for hoodie, there we go, there's the workflow I just created. This workflow as it is, is not really ready for Printify. So we've connected the main bones. Now we need to put this into an image scaler. The image that is generated right here, even though we've selected HD, is still 1024 by 1024. And we're going to need to scale that up a little bit for it to really work on an all over print hoodie. So what I'm going to do is create an HTTP module. I'm gonna unlink these two modules. And then I'm going to add, and I'm going to search for HTTP. And we are going to make a request. And now we're going to fill out the rest of this info. So to set that up, you need to go to Deep AI. Then you'll want to go over to your profile, which is clicking in the right-hand corner up here, View Profile. First thing you're going to do, you need the URL for the scaler. I've copied this URL down into the description so you can easily copy paste it. The method is post. Then you need to put name value API lowercase dash key lowercase. And then where it has the value, this is where you need to grab your API key. So I'm going to go back over to my profile. I'm going to scroll down and we have API keys and you have the option to view or generate a new one. Grab your key, 
paste your key into the HTTP module, then you'll want to scroll down. Under body type, it's XWW form URL encoded. Then you're going to want to open fields and you're going to want to enter one item. Under key, you will say image all lowercase. And then the value is going to be the image that you generate from the image generator module. This is what will pass the image to the image scaler. And then I believe the rest of the settings are the same. Parse response is always yes. Let's go to advanced, yeah, that's all blank. So I haven't needed to configure anything else. Once you've got that set up, run your process. And then if you haven't already done so, you'll need to modify your Printify module so that it grabs the image from your HTTP module instead of Dolly. Now that's going to pass the proper values, I'm going to run the process again. What are you doing, bud? Sweet, my process completed. Let's go over to my Printify account and see what it did. So I'm going to go to Products, Refresh, Garcia Soto Color Splash Hoodie. Let's see what it made. Not bad at all, not bad at all. I like it. Now go to my products. You can see I've created two hoodies so far, but gosh, that is nice. So there we go. Right now it is unpublished. And if I wanna go ahead and let her rip, I can just check them and publish them. But let's say I wanna do some curation. Let's make sure I'm gonna change the text a little bit. Separate the tags. And this is the description that it came up with. This all over print hoodie turns heads with its bright and vibrant colors. Our cyber psychedelic pattern is full of high detail designs that will make you look stylish. That's a little bit machine written. This is kind of what I mean. You might need to doctor up your descriptions or change your prompts over time so that they get better and more accurate with what you're trying to capture. You also need to set your pricing to make sure that your pricing is appropriate. And when you are ready to publish, and you publish to your store, that will go to whatever platform you have your Printify connected to. Now, if we go back to our make workflow, we can set it up to run automatically. So see where it says run once? We have a little toggle button that says scheduling and then every 10 minutes. And we also have this additional module that has a clock on it. These are kind of the same thing. So you can set your process to run at regular intervals every day, days of the week, days of the month, or you can set it to run every few minutes. So what I'm going to do tonight, and I'll post another video tomorrow, I'm gonna to set this process to run every 10 minutes. And then once I'm done here and I save this workflow, I'm gonna create a few more workflows for other items, and I'm gonna have those run so that in the morning, I'm gonna have a store full of hundreds of items. So that's it. That's the creation of your first product. Hello everybody and welcome to day two of building out my online store. Let's take a look at how many products I have in my store waiting for me. So I'm going to head over to Printify, select my shop. Boom! Look at all these products. I mean, I like that a lot. Now, do a little curation, make sure the text is the way I want it. Space graffiti pattern, high detail, geometry symbolism, kangaroo pocket and ribbed hems. Let's save that. Publish. And now I'm publishing it to my store. So let's check some of these out. Oh man, I like that a lot. Well, on day one of building out my web store, I got the automations ready to go. I connected to all the various accounts. I generated products and got that going. This is now going to be generating products while I do other stuff. I set up my website last night with Shopify. Then I purchased a domain. I connected the domain. And what was funny is I would have had probably several hundred products published before the domain was even ready to connect this morning. That's kind of, it's just blowing my mind how fast you can have a a full-on e-com store ready to go. Hello everybody, and this is day three. Well, it's actually more like day seven, but I had some Christmas shopping and other stuff to do. My store is now live. It's out there in the wild. I've got one 
subscriber to my email list so far. Let's take a look at what was created in the last few days. So I did narrow my store down. I decided to do hoodies only, as I kind of thought I was going to do. And now I've got hundreds of products lined up and ready to go. And all of those products were generated automatically while I wasn't even paying attention. Let's take a look at my site. I went from zero all the way to launching a fully automated print-on-demand store with over 400 products in three days flat. Let's go into Make, and I'm going to set up my first module. I'm going to click the little plus, and I'm going to type Google Sheet, if I can spell today. There we go. I'm going to select Google Sheets. All I want to do is get a cell. This tells it to go to the spreadsheet and call up a particular cell or a prompt uh, in this case. Enter manually. You'll need to select select from the list. It'll automatically select my drive. Spreadsheet ID. Click here to choose file. And you'll select the sheet that you want to use. There's the one that I created for my print-on-demand shop. Not sure what this field does, but you'll have to select sheet one or it won't work. And so just select sheet one. I think it just uh, selects the page, perhaps. Then we'll need to define the cell. And in this case, I'm going to use A2, which was my abstract art brushstroke prompt. Then I click OK. That's my first module. Now we create our second module. Now we're going to call Open AI. So search for OpenAI, and what we're going to do in this first module is to generate an image. We'll need to create a prompt. Well, we've already got our prompt. It's in the spreadsheet. So what you do is you're going to map it. And you notice when you click down in this field, it pops open a list. Every module that I had uh, here, right now there's only one other module, so that's all it shows. It would show up right here, and I'm going to select Value. That is going to call this Google Sheet and select the value that was chosen right there. So now that I've done that and I've prompted my photo, we need to select a size, response format, I keep it as URL, and the number of images, the only practical number for a print-on-demand process is one. So you'll leave that at one and hit OK. So now we have it set up to where it's going to draw from this Google Sheet and generate an image. Let's see how that works before we connect anything else. I'm going to click this little play button and run the process once. So you can see it already ran Google Sheet. It got the value of that cell and now it's running this and it's done. When it's done with its process, you'll see a little one. You can click that and you'll see input and output. So check this out. The input it took my prompt, and then the output, under data and one, we now have a URL because I told it to output the image as a URL, and if I want to see it, I can copy that URL, go to my web browser, paste it, there's the art that was generated. Beautiful. However, it's not very big, and if I try to blow it up, it looks kind of crappy. That's where the image scaler comes in, and we'll set that up here in just a little bit. Next thing is I need a product description and I need a title. Uh, so we've got the image that's going to go on our product, which by the way, right now I'm going to set up a piece of uh, canvas art. So I'm going to go into OpenAI again. This time I'm going to create a completion. And you'll notice when I select it, my OpenAI connection is already established. You don't have to do that every time. Once you do that once, you don't have to fool with it again. So create a prompt completion or create a chat completion. We're going to choose prompt completion. We're going to choose model text DaVinci-003. This is the most up-to-date, but also the most edited and stable. They don't give access to chat GPT-4 yet, unfortunately, but that's probably coming. Then we have where we want to put in the prompt that will generate the product title. So because I'm going to use this from a product title, I'm going to say generate a product title for a canvas art print using. Now why do I say using? 
I'm going to map it to the cell. So, or to the image that I just generated, not to the cell, I'm sorry. Not the Google Sheet, it's just sitting there. So I'm going to map it to the image output. And you'll notice when I put down my cursor, I now get two options here. One of them is this little module, and it's kind of blocking it, but that's what it's referencing right there. So, right there, I'm going to put down my cursor and I'm going to select, this is the generate an image module, and I'm going to go down and put data URL. So this is going to actually generate a title based on what it sees in the image. Now, I'm going to go to Show Advanced Settings. Max Tokens is going to set a limit on my product title. So let's say 25 tokens. I don't really want to have more than 25 characters as my product title. If you want more than that, you can use more than that. It just, you know, costs a little bit more to do. I set my product titles to 25 max tokens. Temperature is an AI term. And what this is, is that the, when the closer you are to one, the more, um, you know, you're going to get a well-defined answer in line with your prompt. When you go less than one, you give AI the freedom to kind of go willy-nilly. I don't recommend that. Uh, you can test it just to see what it does. It's kind of funny, but, you know, you won't get the best results, I don't think. N is how many you want, and we only want one. We don't want it to generate several. I leave top P empty. Echo. This is very important. We do not want an echo. Echo is where it will read back the prompt before it answers you. So instead of just giving the product title, it would title your product the prompt plus the product title. You don't want that. You only want the response as your product title, so do not choose Echo. Once this is done, you hit OK. Now I'm going to run this process again just to see what it looks like when these run in sequence. Now every time I run these, it's adding up a total in my OpenAI. So in my OpenAI account, under Manage Account, it has the running total of how much I've spent. Every time you run a process, you're adding a few cents to that. Uh, to give you an idea, it's like two cents an image and a few cents for text. Not very much. All right, these processes have completed. Let's see what this one put out. Generate a product title for an art print using, and then it takes the URL. Now let's take a look at the output. Choices, one, text. Twinkle Night Canvas Art Print. I'm not sure how it arrived at Tranquil Night, but you know, it, it let it do whatever it wants. You can refine this, um, and you can even have it to where you partially create the titles yourself. Now, let's create a product description. So we're going to create a completion again. This time we're going to use a little bit different parameters. So I'm going to use text DaVinci 3. This time I'm going to say create a product description for a piece of canvas art using oops. and now I'm going to reference the title that I just generated so over here we have the completion that generated the majestic art on a seascape and it's going to take the title and it's going to generate the description using the title so this is something that I'm going to add right now. I'm going to kind of segue. This is just a little lesson in prompting. I found that negative prompting is just as valuable as positive. So oftentimes when I'm creating this right here, I'm actually going to tell it what I don't want it to do. So I'm going to say, do not reference the name of any artist live, living or dead. Do not, you know, things like that. Every now and then it'll crank out a product and it'll just put some artist's name on it and you're like, okay, that's nice, but uh, that won't fly, you know? So you kind of need to curate your pieces. 
<laughs> a little bit before letting it rip to make sure that all your prompts are giving you the output that you want. So now, and before I go on, I'm going to show advanced settings. It's important not to overlook these because you can get some pretty hairy results. So I'm going to do 1100 max tokens. Oh, and that's another thing. I'm going to limit this. So create a project description, a product description for a piece of canvas art using that. And use no more than, let's say, 300 characters. You can do more, and I'm going to set my max tokens to 400. That just gives it a little bit of leeway, but in general, that's the max amount of tokens it can spend, the max amount of money it can spend uh, generating this. So I set it to 400, and in general, that's going to ensure that it will not go over that amount. You also don't want it to just generate a very long, wordy description that's ultimately useless for you. So there we go. Temperature, I'm going to set to 1, like I did before. Ignore top P. Set the number to 1. I do not want any echoes. And there we go. So now I've got my description, and I've got the first four. I've got the image generated, product title generated, and I've got my description generated. Now I have an optional module, and I'm going to do one more completion. I like to create a list of hashtags that I'll use in social media. So just like we set it up before, we're going to create a prompt completion, select DaVinci 03, and now I'm going to say generate a list of 10 relevant hashtags for, and I'm going to reference the title. So there's my create a completion. There's the title. So I'm going to say, well, actually, I'm going to, instead of just referencing the title, I'm going to reference the article. So up here, we have the one we just created. There we go. Generate a list of 10 relevant hashtags for, and then it calls up the, the product description. And now it's important to have them formatted like you like it. I always include something like, do not use bullets, numbers, lists, and or commas. Separate hashtags with spaces. That's how I prefer it. Uh, if I didn't do that, it would likely put my hashtags as a bulleted numbered list right under the product description, which just looks sloppy. So this is another example of refining the AI prompts until you get what you want. Next, we're going to pass the image that we created into the image scaler. And to do that, I'm going to use a different module. So type in HTTP, and we're going to use the HTTP module. This is what I call the Swiss Army Knife of modules because it allows you to connect to really any website that has APIs. We're going to do make a request. There we go. The method, we want to use post. Now we're going to add a header. And that'll be API-key, all lowercase. It might be different for different websites that you use, but that's what it is for this. And this is where we're going to actually insert our API key. So I'm going to go back over to Deep AI, copy my secret key, and paste it in there. And now I'm set up. Where it says body type, we need to enter application X WW form URL encoded. And then where it says fields, we need to grab the image. So I'm going to say image lowercase, and under value, I'm going to map to the image generated by our OpenAI module. So there we go, data URL. Now it's going to take that image, pass it to this website, and enlarge it. And last option, parse response, yes. Don't need to select any advanced settings here. I've been getting the results that I want just this way. Don't know what the advanced settings do. So now we have that set up and let's run the process and see our enlarged image. There we go, it's done. And let's see what the output was. So under output, we've got this output URL. Copy paste it to your web browser and there we go. And look at how much it's zooming compared to the first piece of art I created, much larger. 
that'll work perfectly for print on demand. Next, we need to pass the images and descriptions into our print on demand shop to actually create a product. So we're going to call up another module and we're going to select Printify. Printify is the print on demand provider. And you actually have to do this in at least two parts. First, you have to upload the image that your product is going to use before you use the create a product module. If you don't do that, when it creates the product, it has no image to grab. You have to upload the art that you've created before it can grab that product. So we're going to upload an image. And now you need to set up your connection to Printify if you haven't done that. So you'll go over to your Printify, go over to your account under connections and generate your API token. Generate the token, copy it, and then you're going to paste it right there. Once you have your connection established, now we're going to map to the image. We want to give the image a name, so you have to generate a name when it loads to Printify, and I use the product title that we created. So I go over to the module that has the product title, I map to its text output, and now it's going to take the text output for the product title and make that the file name. Upload image by URL, since that's what we've been using, we've been outputting as URL. And now I'm going to go to the HTTP, HTTP module that we used to upscale the image, and I'm going to take the output of the upscaled image and I'm going to map it right there. Very important. If you map it to the original image created by OpenAI, it's going to be uploading the low resolution. You only want to upload the high resolution to make your print-on-demand products. So there we go. OK. That uploads the image. And the last step is to create the product. So we're going to create another Printify module. And this time we're going to go to Create Product. You want to select your shop. I have multiple, but just select a shop that you want to use. Then you're going to, under the title field, find the module where we generated the title, map to that. Now we're going to map to our description. So find the module where we created the product description. Map there. And remember how I created hashtags? Right after the description, I'm going to add the module with the hashtags. That way it'll output my description immediately followed by my hashtags. Now I'm going to go to Blueprint ID, and this is where we select the product that we want to use. So in this case, I'm going to be making a piece of canvas art, and I know I can find what I want by typing in generic. So canvas gallery wraps, generic brand. But as you see, you have access to every product on their list. Print provider, we'll select the provider for that particular product. Now we need to add our variants. It always wants to try to map that, and you don't need to do that in this particular area. So we're going to unselect map where it says variant ID, scroll till you find the size that you want. And I create square art, so I'm going to do the largest square, which is 36 by 36. I'm going to set my price to 19900. And the reason there is there's the two zeros because this system will always output two decimal points, but it just doesn't tell you it's going to do that. So to get a price of 199, I need to put in 19900. If I put in the decimal, it messes it all up. Now I'm going to enable that. And now I want to create another variant to give another size option. So I'm going to select the 24 by 24 square. And I'm going to price that at $99, 9900, enabled. Now I need to put the image on these things. So where it says print areas, I need to add item. I need to add my variant ID. And just like before, I need to select my largest variant here. And that's actually all I'm going to select. It'll put the same size on all the smaller ones. But I'm just going to choose my largest and now under placeholders, I'm going to add where it says position, I'm going to type front. Front is the generic uh, position for putting your art on any item. So I'm typing front, and then where it says images, now we need to call up the right image. Under image ID, I need to map. So in this instance, I need to enable mapping, and I need to call up the image from where we uploaded it to Printify, not any of the other image modules. 
So I added my Printify module, upload image ID, right here. And now, for my placement, I need to use 0 0.5, 0 0.5. This keeps it centered, and where it says scale, I'm going to use 1. I don't want it to scale it up or down. And then where it says angle, I want to do 360. 360 just means it's going to be upright in this particular system. Any other value, your image will be not upright. So there we've got that, and now we want to add our tags. So I'm going to add the tags appropriate to the item. I use canvas, brush strokes, and abstract. If you're using Shopify, these can also help further categorize it. Otherwise, tags are totally optional. So their last part is print details. And this has to do with something that is in the print on demand service, uh, specifically for canvas art. You have the option, do you want your edges to be, you know, clean, white? I do mirrored to where it continues the art and wraps it around the edge. Looks just a little bit better. That's my personal preference. And then I click OK. And now we're ready to watch this puppy in action. So I'm going to save it and let's run the process. And at the end of this, it's going to put a product in my Printify shop, and the product is going to be unpublished. There's also another module where we could add uh, to publish the product. I'm not doing that yet. And the reason that AI is not perfect, every now and then it generates a description or something that's just way off base. So I like to have a bunch of products be created and then go into the system on Monday morning and publish them myself and I publish them after curating it a little bit just to make sure all my descriptions and titles are are right otherwise you'll end up with some weird things hopefully in the future that changes so there we go it went all the way through every process I'm gonna go over to my print on demand store go to my products and there we go there's the unpublished art that it just made art print of raging waves on the rocky coastline <laughs> well as you can see I need to refine how I'm doing that title right here Probably I just need to reference uh, brushstroke art or something like that to get it to work right. But it generated the product. It put in my description. It added the, the and as you can see, it kind of truncated. I wanted it to give me 10 hashtags, but I might have set my uh, tokens too low. So if I expand my tokens to something like 50 instead of 25, I'm probably going to get all of the hashtags like I wanted. So there we go, and the prices are set appropriately, and you can publish. Today I'm going to be getting into showing you how to create a backpack. So if you haven't seen my first video, you'll need to go ahead and check that out. I've linked it in the description, and everything is the same up until we get to the Printify modules. This is where we're going to find uh, the settings that we need to apply the art to a backpack instead of canvas art. So go up to your Printify module, the one that creates a product, and this is where we make our changes. Everything else stays the same. You've got your Google Sheet, you've got your image creator, your description generator, and then we've got the little module that upsizes the images. All of this is in the previous lesson. That passes it to Printify. And now we're going to scroll down. And under Blueprint ID, this is where we select the different products that we want to make. And you'll type in Backpack and select Generic Brand. That's the one that I know the Blueprint for. So select that, MWW On Demand. And now we're going to set up our one variant, and it should start with just one variant. You don't need to add any more because there's only one type of backpack, one size. You'll click this little drop-down, choose one size. If it's blank, set your price. The pricing rules are kind of funky in this software. It automatically places two decimals when it exports, so this 9900 is actually $99. That's what I'm going to charge for this backpack. I give myself a little bit of room to run extreme sales and stuff like that. Where it says is enabled, you'll want to type yes, you choose your variant, set your price. You'll scroll down, and if it's not already enabled, you're going to want to add a print area. Right under here, under variant IDs, you'll choose the same one, the one size. And then under placeholders, this is where we're going to identify and select the art. 
So you'll need to start with front position and then under front position you'll add image. You have to map the ID and what we do is we map the ID from this module right here. You want to take the enlarged image when you're telling it to grab the image and put it on the item, which is what this section is doing right here. So fifth module, I grab the image ID. My placement is the same as canvas art, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, that keeps it centered. Scale in this case, I didn't just do one. I scaled up one and a half times, and that's because the backpack happens to be a size where it actually needs a little bit of scaling. Don't worry, it'll still come out looking good. The on anything like a backpack or a textile, you got to remember threads are going to be a certain size. You can only get a certain resolution. You don't really have to go crazy with the resolution on printed duffel bags and things because the threads just, they're not going to be that high resolution. Angle is 360, just like it was last time. That keeps it straight up, uh, right up. Now, this is where we get into the real fun. The rest of the items in Printify are not as easy as canvas art. Uh, because you have more than just a front. On canvas art, you just have front, and that is it. Now we have to list every position where we want to load this art. So first you're going to type in top, part to front, separated with underscores, and you're going to enter in the same data. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 1.5, and you map to the image. Scroll down. Now we add a third position, top, part to back. This, all this is really doing is your backpack has more than one print area. You have to define them according to the variables that they use in their system, and then you have to apply the art to each position that needs it. And in the case of backpacks, we have front, top part to front, top part to back, front pocket, and front pocket flap. Each one of these is set up the same way. Oh, almost left out. There's one more position, bottom. These bags have a bottom. So really, each one of these positions is set up the exact same way. You just have to know what the little uh, variable is that you have to use in these. Otherwise, it won't output correctly. Add your tags. I add backpack and floral collection. I really only add these tags because it helps me sort them in Shopify later into categories. Then where it says print on side, I choose regular and hit OK. So let's go ahead and run this process and see what happens. Now it's generating description, enlarging the image, passing the enlarged image into Printify's library, creating the product. See how easy that was? Now let's go over to my Printify store. I'm going to refresh the screen, and we will see a new product. Oop, it switched stores. Sorry about that. There we go. So this is what it just generated right here. Beautiful. Generated a floral pattern. It applied it to all the places on the backpack, and now it is publishing to my store. That's it. That's how to create a backpack. Stay tuned, and we'll learn how to create some other fun stuff. Coming up next is duffel bags. Today I'm going to show you how to make duffel bags using OpenAI and automated workflows. Like the previous lessons, go into your scenarios, and the easiest way to create a new item is to actually clone it. So you'll clone one of the ones that you've already created, and then once you've got the item that you want to modify, let's go into my duffel bags, make it easy for myself. Today I'm going to crank out a brush stroke oil painting pattern duffel bag. So everything remains the same, but your prompt to the style art that you want to put on your bag. Then you go into your Printify Create a Product module, and you'll want to, you know, if you change the title like I do, I title my duffel bags dash duffel bag to make it easy for myself later in sorting my store. Go down to your blueprint ID, search duffel bag. If I'm not mistaken, there's only one option. Yeah. So select your duffel bag, MWW print on demand. And what we're going to do now is set your variant ID. And you'll notice there's two variants available here. 
Totally up to you if you want to sell both bags or just one. We'll set up the large variant ID, and if you want to, to set up the second one, it'll be the same process, but you'll create an additional variant. Lather, rinse, repeat. So I've selected small, set my price there, same thing. In the print areas, if you wish to create both variants, you're going to actually have to create the next variant. You'll have the option to add it down below, and it will be its own variant and its own set of placeholders. So under variant IDs, we will go to large, and I'm going to set up my large variant here. Placeholders are front. Everything is almost the same in your configuration, mapping to the image in your upload an image module settings, but then we have scale 2.0. The, the textile thread used on the duffel bag is thicker, so you're not going to get the same resolution. Therefore, you can actually scale the art up even more, and it needs to be because of the printable surface area, but you won't notice. You're not going to be able to notice the resolution simply because the thread is so large. So, pretty cool. Your art will show up looking amazing nine times out of ten. Then, next position is left underscore side. Lather, rinse, repeat. And I'll come back to this in a minute. I've added a logo to both sides. And what I've done, the reason I have it, well, I'll come back to that in a second. So your next position is right side, lather, rinse, repeat. And those are your print areas on your duffel bag. You have three different print areas. Now let's back up. You'll notice that I added an additional image item, and it appears to have a PNG selected. Well, it does have a PNG selected. This is my company logo, or the brand logo, rather. I created a PNG so that I could have a tiny logo inside of a bigger square centering a smaller logo tab. And you'll see what I'm, I'm talking about in a minute. So I was able to select my logo, and you have to upload this into Printify. So you'll have to upload your images to your provider. That way you can select them here. Otherwise, it won't be available. Configure your item. In this case, it only needs to be 1.0. I don't want to scale it. I don't want a big, gaudy logo. Totally up to you if you love your logo. Then under right side, I do the same thing. I add an image item. I select the one that I want to use. Configure. Set up my tags. Which, by the way, I'm, I'm running a Shopify store. This helps me sort them into collections really the, the main reason that I use these tags. And then where it says print on side, I select regular and hit OK. Now let's run this process and see what I get. All righty. So we're going to go to Printify. Refresh my page. And there we go. You can see it's a different tone on each side. It's basically the same art, but wrapping around. Interesting bag. This one kind of came out pukey. So let's generate another one and see if it comes out prettier, because that's kind of meh. Anyway, keeping you in this video just to generate a prettier bag. Let's check this out. This one came out much better, I can tell, even without blowing it up. Oh, yeah. There's a nice bag. And as you can see on the sides, come on, guys, load the image. It can take a second to load the images. There's my logo. So that's the logo applied to one side, and the logo applied to the other is actually under the mesh, but you can still see it. One side's in black because of the black mesh, and I did the other side red. So that's it. That's how to make duffel bags. So let's take a look at how that looks in my store real quick. IonikeSoul.com is the store that I launched. And there it is. Newest duffel bag. You can see there's the one I want to remove. There's the new one. Oh, sweet. So another thing cool about this automated process, as it runs when I sleep, Every day you wake up and it's like a grab bag of new cool designs. A lot of them are really cool. This morning's lesson, I'm going to show how to make t-shirts. I've had several requests, so I'm going to do something just a little bit different. 
I've never done this before. I don't know exactly what settings to use, and I'm going to make a video where you see me figure out how to do all that. So let's go first. I've got open make.com and I have Printify open. First, I'm going to go over to Printify and let's check out some of the t-shirts. So the ones that I use, I'm a cheapskate for these. I try to use the least expensive t-shirts that I know are good quality. And in general, I like Gildan. I have plenty of the shirts myself, so let's see. I like the heavy cotton tee a little bit better, so that's the one that I am going to look for. So what I'm going to do, go over to Make, and I'm going to grab one of my already existing scenarios, and I'm going to clone it because that's easier than starting from scratch. So we're going to clone this puppy, give it a new name, cloned shirt. We'll figure that out later. Save. And now I've got a cloned process and we can go in and modify it. So let's see what do I want to make. Let's say camping, hiking, simplified graphic t-shirt. save. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my art generator prompt. And on this one, I don't have a Google Sheet connected. Um, that's actually just me being lazy. But just so you know, Google Sheets kind of helps you if you want to change the prompt later. I've got that in my first video. In this video, I'm just basically running the prompt right out of the module. And so what I'm going to do is change this. And what I want to get is a mountain hiking scene and I'm gonna give it some special prompts because what I want I don't just want like a photographic on the shirt though no reason you can't do that I'm kind of inspired from these shirts I've seen lately which are like almost simplified graphics in 2d and I'm gonna see if I can replicate that with my prompt so let's do mountain hiking scene simplified 2d logo style graphic and then Throw in some other modifiers just so it doesn't come out with, you know, something gross. High resolution, 8K, blah, 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 blah. Um, I'm going to see if that can do it. And I might try a few other modifiers uh, later. And I'll make a video about how you find those. So let's save that prompt. Then let's go in and give it a different prompt for my name and I'm going to name it um, generate a so let's get creative here instead sometimes you have better results instead of just telling it like you know generate a name for a t-shirt it might be kind of bland what it comes up with so let's do a generate a name for a poem about hiking that has never been used before. I have no idea how that's going to come out. We're going to find out together. So that's going to give the shirt a little bit of a better name than just shirt and probably a little bit of a better name than telling it to come up with a shirt name. Uh, feel free to try both though. Now let's do the product description and in this one I'm going to say created a product description for a t-shirt with a graphic of and then notice how it's mapped right here a map graphic of and it's mapping the module so it's actually grabbing let's see where it's grabbing from it's grabbing this one so that's a cool tip that I totally forgot to leave in other videos when you've mapped something and you want to figure out okay which module is that pointing to if you hover over this you can see how this one starts to pulse and vibrate because that is mapped to 15 text on this so it's taking the name for the poem and it is now generating a product description based on that and we'll see if it'll work. You'll notice right here I have search engine optimized. You can include that in your prompts and it will make some attempt to to do that. It won't always be accurate. Sometimes you'll need to to give it a little help, but I have confidence that in the future, you know, these text da Vinci models will only get better and using things like SEO optimized will come out much better. I also tell it to add 10 relevant hashtags at the end, use the word and instead of the and sign. And the reason I did this is 
out of nowhere, I started having problems in my publishing, and I noticed it was using and signs in the hashtags, and then when I removed those, all of a sudden the error went away. So there was something broken in passing the information to Printify. They might have fixed it, they might not, but this has been in my prompt ever since. So this is kind of an example of prompt editing, too. I need to make a video about that. Um, do not include any artist names. This is important. Because when you're generating art, sometimes it'll go out there and it'll grab a real artist's name. You don't want that to happen. That's basically setting you up, uh, you know, for copying somebody or for at least being a dick. So I say do not include any artist names. Haven't had that problem since. So there we go. We've got the art. We've got the name. We've got the description. We're going to pass the art like we did before with other things into the deep AI where it's going to enlarge it. So you, once you have the art enlarged, you pass it over to Printify. Now we're going to change it to a t-shirt. So where it says dash canvas, I'm going to change to t-shirt. These are mapped to the name and the description so that it populates automatically within the product. Then we're going to go change the blueprint ID. So here I'm going to search for Gildan, since that's the shirt I want to use. And there we go. Unisex heavy cotton tee. That's the one I want to use. But, as you can see, you're really not limited, so choose whichever shirt you want to produce. And then you're going to need to choose your provider. Okay, I'm not sure, so we're going to go back over here. I'm going to go to the unisex cotton tee I want to use, and then look at all these providers. So they're sorted by Printify ranking, which in general you want to go with the highest ranking. Uh, with me, I'm in the U.S., so I want to go with the highest ranking that is also shipping from the U.S., so I'm going to choose Underground Threads. Let's go back over to our module, and we're going to scroll until we find... There it is. Underground Threads is my provider ID. There we go. And now we need to set up our variants. This is kind of complicated in shirts because you'll need to set up a variant for every size and every color that you want that is very tedious and there's no escaping it. I'll give you a little nugget of wisdom, um, at least from my own experience. If uh, So when I'm creating shirts, if I create them in an assortment of different colors, none of those do as good as the shirts that I create in one color with just different size options. It might be an analysis paralysis kind of thing. Too many options makes people, you know, they don't know which way to go. I don't know. In general, I have better luck with just one color and making different sizes. So that's what I'm going to show here. So as soon as you set up your variant, you don't want to do a mapping. You want to do a drop down menu. And I'm just going to do, let's see, I don't know what azalea is. Ice gray. Where is a brown? Okay, we'll do military green since I'm doing a hiking and camping shirt. So I'm going to set up my variants. I've got my small variant. And based on the pricing over here, you'll set your prices. So let's see what the actual pricing is on these puppies. It says starting from $739, but I bet you that is not underground threads. Oh, wow, from $519, so that's even better. So what I'm going to do is price based on that. I'm going to price the small at, let's see, $14. Then I'm going to set up the next variant. And I'm going to do the medium in the military green. I'm going to set that at the same price. And the pricing, you'll have to, you know, base that on what the actual prices are. I'm not going to show that. That'll be your own research. You'll have to go over into Printify and examine the prices to determine what you actually want to charge. In general, for larges, I charge 17 to 19, but that's just me. I like to run sales, so I price them accordingly so that I can do that. All right, so now we have three variants, but I want to add more. I want at least XL and XXL, so I'm going to do that. Price usually increases as you go to these sizes, so I'm going to price accordingly. So this is kind of an annoying glitch in Make, I think. 
when you deselect that and then click the pop down, sometimes it goes right back over to map. You just have to toggle it and play with it. It's kind of lame. So I'm going to do 2XL and then I'll set that at $21, let's say. Make sure that all of these are selected to yes. Oh yeah, I did something wrong. Here I am putting in the period. Take that puppy out. We do not want that because that will mess up the pricing. So for a $19 item, you see what it's going to look like. This is purely a matter of how it's passing over to Printify. That's it. It's just a quirk of the system. So make sure you do not use a decimal in your pricing. And that's it. Now I want to set up print areas. And this is where, okay, lucky for you, you really only need to set up one. You don't need to set up a different preview image for every different size. Most shirt listings don't have that. It just becomes redundant. So what you're going to do is select, in general, I'll select the large. And now you set up your placeholders. We've got front. That's the only one. I haven't tested the back and we'll do that maybe in another video. I would assume if you want something on the back, you would need to add another placeholder, set it up as back, and then set it up, you know, let's find our image. So I'm going to select map. Here I want to use mapping instead of the drop down. The drop down is going to look through Printify images that are in my library. Map will allow me to take the image that was output through our process. And here we go, output URL. Oh no, that's the wrong one. Sorry guys. The uploaded Printify image. There we go. 5 ID. Now, I'm going to leave scaling at 1, X and Y at 0.5, angle 360 keeps it right side up. I'm going to change my tags to t-shirt and hiking, maybe outdoors. Set these however you want. Sometimes in your, in your shop, they're going to help you sort according to category. So sometimes there is a rhyme or a reason why you might use tags or not use tags at all. And on print on side, I'm going to say regular and not do any of the funky options that you might do for canvas art. I've set up my product. I've set up all my variants and their prices. And then I've only done one print area example. You could do this for everyone. You re just really don't need to. What's going to happen is as they select the different preview images on your product, they're not going to see a difference from small or anything like that. They're just going to know by selecting the size that that's the size they're going to get. If you don't want to handle it that way and you want to create new previews for every single one, that's just more work for you, but it's totally possible. So I've got everything set up the way I like it. I'm going to save and let's run this puppy and see what I get. Enlarging the image, uploading the image. Ooh, we had an error. Variance ID must be an integer. What the heck? Let's see what's going on there. Oh, look at this punk. It mapped. So even though I selected that correctly, somehow in processing it tried to revert back. Now I have to select my variant ID again manually. And so this is going to be the XL, because it's the fourth place. Military Grain XL. Punk. Yeah, that's what that was. And I'm blocking my own button. Okay. Save. Success. Went all the way through the process. Let's go over to my store. My products. There we go. Soldiern through Wildwood t-shirt. Fingers crossed that this came out. Oh, wow. Did that do what I want the first time? That is not bad. I might, uh, you know, it needs some tweaking. So first thing I notice, it's not military green. What's going on here, Printify? Let's see. Oh, weird. It looks like it wants you to select the military green manually. Yeah, looks a little bit better, but I, I want to go and tweak my stuff. But for what I was trying to accomplish, that's not half bad. It's abstract. So there we go, a t-shirt. And if you wanted the graphic to be smaller, because, you know, that's a little bit big. I was actually going for a more smaller centered graphic. What I would do, and let's test it again. I'm going to go in. 
and under the print areas where it says scale, let's do 0 0.75. I'm going to change my prompt a little bit. I don't know if this is going to work. Clean lines. What is the style from Zelda's Wind Waker? Rotoscope. Rotoscope. There we go. Rotoscope style. See what that does. All right. Save. All right. Go over to the store. My products. Mountain Trekking Temptation. Let's see what this came out with. Not bad. I think I would spend some time tweaking this until I actually got the results I wanted. But now you have the sauce. That is how you put t-shirts out there. Have fun making shirts. Today I'm going to show you how to build multiple product workflows that will allow you to generate multiple print-on-demand products simultaneously and then publish them to the same store or even completely different stores. So first I'm going to log into my Wonder account. This is where I go for the copy-paste workflows that make things way easier on myself. So I'm going to go over to my workflows menu, premium workflows, and I want to snag an all over print t shirt workflow. I don't want the crew. Wait, that's not crew, that's cut and sew tee. And do believe that is what I want. Let me make sure. I'm going to grab the t shirt and then I'm going to grab the hoodie. Let's copy that. That's the dolly version. Then I'm going to go over into my make account and sign in over there and create a new scenario. And all I have to do, paste, boom, there's the workflow. I got to modify it a little bit for my tastes, but let's go back and grab the hoodie. Where is the dolly hoodie? Unisex pullover hoodie dolly. There we go. Paste. We really only need duplicates of the Printify Create a Product modules and the OpenAI Text Completion modules. So I'm going to get rid of all the redundancy real quick. Don't need a duplicate Google Sheets. Only need one generated image. Only need one upload an image. I don't use these, the Publish a Product modules. I spoke about this in my first video. I prefer to publish in draft state, which is what create a product does. I don't want to push them to my website, so I just don't use those two modules. Totally optional. So now I'm going to connect these in a single chain and add a couple other modules. First, I'll take this little timing module over to the beginning of the chain. We'll connect those over here. There we go. Then I'm going to start disconnecting where I want to add things. I'm going to disconnect that. And this is mostly a matter of my organization right now. I'm setting it up the way I want it to flow in my head. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save this. Then I'm going to copy the modules that I've already set up from other scenarios I've made and paste them here to save myself some time. Now I'm going to go to all over prints. Let's go to my hoodie. And the module that I need to copy is the image scaler. So I'm going to right click and copy module. And then let's go back to the scenario I was just creating. Now I'm going to paste the HTTP module I just copied and drop it into place. Now I need to get rid of that. So we have one generate a title, two generate descriptions, and the order here kind of matters. I need to put my generate a title before I upload my image. So if you can see where it says file name, if I hover over that, 
the module that it is using starts pulsating this one right here, it is pulling the file name from the generated name here. So what would happen if this module was all the way over here? Well, what's going to happen? The first time you ever run the process, it's probably going to fail because nothing was generated for it to pull from. So right here, it's looking for the image URL that's generated right here. And so we're going to have to run this process and get that value. I bet it won't be here. So look, I want to assign. Yeah, it doesn't have the full path. It's data URL. But to get that, I'm going to have to run this process one time. So let me run it and let it fail. Sometimes you have to do this to get the value that you need to click on to be present. Here we go. It's generating our URL. Then it's going to fail at Printify because it does not have the full path. It's just got data. Now we have to delete that, get data, and output URL. It's kind of lame that it doesn't show us that, but I think it's because we can choose different types of output. So it doesn't exactly know what to put there, but you always have to kind of run processes before you actually get them running so that you can fill out all the fields and make, all right, and we have generate a description twice. I'm going to link those, and then I have my create a t-shirt and create a hoodie, one after the other. Now let's run this process again. Let me save. Right, it's still telling me my module has changes I need to save. When it does that, it wants you to open up the module that's got the indicator, which is this little black circle. Click on it, hit OK, now save. Then let's run it and let's see what happens. Looks like it created two products. Let's pop on over to my Printify and refresh my product list. And there we go. Entropy Nexus. It created both a t-shirt and a hoodie that is matching. Looks like it's overusing the word Nexus. So in another video, I'm going to go through modifying my prompts so that I don't keep getting the same repeated nonsense terms. Kind of gets boring. So let's go back over to make. And I'm going to set the intervals that I want to run this process. And I've already loaded up my store. I don't really want to just load it up with new items every 10 minutes. So what I want to do now, and this is totally optional, by the way, if your method is to blast out thousands of products just so that you get the volume out there and Google scrapes you more, you know, that, that might very well be viable. So I'm going to do every day and generate a new hoodie and a new t-shirt every day. And I'm going to have some kind of a model where I show, you know, showcase the newest thing every day on my social profiles and keep it to like one post a day. Going to save. And now it's set to run every day. If you want to add more modules to this workflow and add more products, all you have to do is copy paste them, add them to the chain. I recommend doing them sequentially. There are certain features of make, like we have a signal router that can spray them at the same time. I recommend keeping it all sequential. I tried to set my scenario up with a router aggregator at first, but unfortunately what happened is I would encounter errors sometimes. My only conclusion is that Printify doesn't like it when you have simultaneous connections going, trying to upload images all at the same time. The system would be much happier if you would upload one product at a time. This workflow right here can also be extended it really as long as you want it to be. I'm generating one title and one image that I'm applying to multiple products. You could also modify this to generate multiple titles, multiple images, and spit them into multiple products. You could even publish to multiple stores. And I want to show you how to do that real quick. It's actually pretty easy. So first, we're going to go over to our Printify account. If you haven't already created multiple stores, you would need to do so. Printify, you can create as many stores as you want under your Printify account, and each different store can connect to a different platform, and it walks you through that when you're setting it up. So right now, I have my main website, but I could create a new store, point that and connect it to my eBay store, and then I would go back into my make scenario. I'm going to copy this module. I'm going to paste, connect them in sequence, and now I'm going to connect this to my eBay store instead. So instead of Motherfunker, I'm going to grab Scolomance, which is one of my eBay stores, hit OK, 
And that's it. Now it's going to publish it to my website, and then it's going to also publish it to my eBay store. Oh no, my workflow is broken. I was just about to make a new workflow video, and I discovered my processes haven't been running for almost a week. So what the heck happened? I dug into it, and I found some documentation on Make. Apparently they have changed the API with OpenAI. I didn't find any real specific documentation on how to set that up. So I spent a little while tinkering until I finally got it to work and I wanted to show you how to get your workflows back in action if you don't already know. What you are going to want to do, OpenAI has changed the way they handle their text completions through the API. They are no longer using prompt completion, so what's really happening to cause this error, it evokes prompt completion and then the model that it's looking for just isn't there anymore. If you check out the error message, text DaVinci 3 has been deprecated. But then you can't select any new models. When you go to create a chat completion, you're able to select the new models. So you can select right here. I'm using GPT 3.5 Turbo, but feel free to test anything else if you want. It's handling this just a little bit differently. So as soon as you select that, you might scroll down and notice, well, where's the field where I want to enter my actual prompt? And so here, what you're going to want to do, where it says messages, you'll notice if you try to close this, it'll tell you the field must not be empty. So it's waiting for something here. And I just kind of poked around until I got this right. I click add item. I went to roll and I selected system. First I selected the others and it didn't really work. And then this is where I copied the prompt from what I had before. So I'm gonna switch back real quick to create a prompt completion and it still contains my prompt. I'm gonna copy that, switch back over to chat completion and under role system, I'm going to paste message content. And this was just kind of a shot in the dark, but it did return a value that I could use, although it put it in a little bit different place. So let me close out of that, copy. Then I wanna open up this one, which is my description, and I'm going to copy paste first. So copy paste what I've got there. Then I'm going to go to chat completion, do the same thing that I just did, 3.5 turbo. Then I have to add message, roll system, and I'm gonna copy paste the prompt that I had before. Everything else should be good. And now I'm going to click OK. Those will now return new values. And what's going to happen is at first, this is gonna error out because we have to choose the returned values. And right now it's referencing the way the older modules worked. I can't grab those now, so let me show you. I'm gonna run this workflow, let it go all the way through and fail at the Printify modules, and then we're gonna get our returned values. I had to poke around in the results to figure out where those were. So I wanna show you how you do that. Might help you troubleshoot modules in the future. Let's run. All right, there we go. So it failed on my Printify module and what it's telling me, missing value. It couldn't get the value for the image name. So let's see the, the results it returned. We go to output bundle choices, one message, and you have under message, that's the little name it generated. And so what that's gonna look like when we want to reference that, we will delete what is there because the, the error message we're getting right here, it's not able to grab the file name and we are going to find choices, message, there it is, where it says Vandermeer, messages, content, that replaces that, and now it will create the file name based on the output we just generated that landed in a slightly different place. And the next step to getting this working again, if I run the workflow right now, it's gonna fail again, and the last step is to make changes in my create a product module and I can do that now without having to run the process again. I'm going to simply select under the title, choices, message, so that'll put the name right there, dash AOP kangaroo pouch hoodie. And then in my description, I'm going to go to delete what I got there and let's do the full description. Again, under choices, message, and content. Let's make sure everything else looks good, it should. Yep, haven't really done anything different to the way it handles images. So I'm going to save this. Uh, it's telling me modules. If you ever get that message, it really just wants you to open up a module and click OK. So I'm gonna do that over here. That little black icon on the corner was indicating it had unsaved changes. Save, now I don't get that little error message and let's run this process again. 
there we go. It was successful. So let's take a look at what it put in my Printify account. And there we go. Russo AOP Kangaroo Pouch Hoodie. That's it. That fixed the workflow. If you're still having trouble, feel free to reach out in the comments and I'll see if I can help you out. Don't forget to hit the likey button if you likey. Smash the subscribey if you want a scribey. Thank you, thank you.